This is Alina, an ex-New York architect that started Etsy as a side hustle. And in January 2023, she only sold about $500 in revenue in her business, but she was bound and determined to make this work. And this January 2024, she sold $16,000 in revenue. Over the last six months, she sold $210,000 in total revenue and even had her biggest month ever of November of 2023 and sold $50,000 in revenue in her Etsy business. And she was able to do all of this without having to actually create or ship any items herself using a process called print on demand. Print on demand is a process where you create designs on your computer or your phone and you post those designs for sale on Etsy. And when you get orders in, you have a print production partner like Printify actually print those orders and ship them to your customers all for you. So you don't have to worry about buying tons of inventory or dealing with all of the shipping logistics. In this interview with Alina, we'll learn what products she sold and was successful with, strategies she used to add value to designs to stand out in the search results, what software she used to find low competition, high search volume keywords and niches to design for, how she was able to sell all of that without even using any Etsy advertising by optimizing her listings. And make sure to stay tuned all the way until the end of this video because there's just so much value here and we do have a special giveaway for three lucky winners. All of her stats have been vetted and verified for this interview, but we won't be sharing her actual print on demand store for privacy reasons. And I'll link my free mini course down below that'll help you start and set up your Etsy shop and even post your very first design all in one day, even if you know nothing. So let's go ahead and say hello to Alina. Hello, Alina. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think this is going to be such a fun conversation and it is always so fun to connect with you since we have kind of been on this journey together for quite a few years. So really great to see you and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Cassie. It's a great pleasure. I'm watching your YouTube videos all the time, not missing a single one. So it's an honor to be a part of this beautiful community. And um, yes, I'm so thankful for our journey together. We started together in the mentorship group a few years back, and uh, it's been only uphill since. <laughs> yes, yes. We met from being in the Life Hacker Couple mentorship group. It's another YouTube channel, which is how uh, we both found print on demand. And then now it's just been a magical journey ever since. And we uh, are excited to learn more about your story. So let's get started, Alina, with kind of what life was like for you before you started print on demand, what you did for work, and kind of what brought you to wanting to start a business or find a side hustle yeah i um actually worked as an architect in a new york firm before i started pod and while i really enjoyed the creative aspect of being an architect designing things seeing things built i really was looking for more independence and more freedom frankly and being able to travel so during the pandemic i started to search for some crafty things, maybe something I can produce and sell. I initially stumbled upon stickers and like many of us thought of, oh my God, I'm gonna order this printer and do these things myself. And I really like packing and like adding bows on envelopes, I don't know. But then I found a YouTube video of a life hacker couple and it was, life-changing when i saw what etsy has finally rolled out this integration with printify and printful and all these words that i didn't know at the time i was so excited i watched it like holding my breath and by the end of the video i already registered in like accounts and all these websites that's amazing. You know, it's funny that you say that because I was the exact same way. I saw the video and I watched it at like midnight in my blow up hot tub during the pandemic. And then the next morning I just opened my shop. So I think that's one important maybe takeaway of like what it takes to be a successful seller. You kind of have to just like jump in with both feet and get started before you know all the facts sometimes, because if you sit and research for months and months and months, 
I just think it's too hard to learn without doing, you know, you kind of have to like take a step and learn and then take a step and learn. And so I love that that was kind of a similar journey for you. And I shared before you hopped on in the intro that you've sold $210,000 in the past six months and even hit your biggest month ever in Etsy with 50K in November in revenue. That's super, super impressive. And honestly, I'm sure life-changing. So let's dive a little bit more into that because I think one of the big questions people always have is about how much profit did you actually get to keep from that $210,000 in the last six months? Yeah, last few months have been really positive for me. A lot of happy customers, returning customers, I hit a few bestsellers and I feel really fortunate to be able to make money on Etsy while making people happy and creating products that basically just are going to be part of people's holidays and best moments and help them to express themselves. It's been really fun. And November, while it is still fun, having 50k in sales it it is very stressful as i'm sure everybody here can relate to a lot of customer service a lot of dealing with uh, lost shipments and other shortcomings of being in the high season but it was really really fun regarding my profit margin i actually am really uh due diligent about protecting my margin and it's comparatively high to other sellers i'd say it's between 35 and 40 percent so i would yes because we can also discuss it more i almost don't use ads and i think that's what keeps my margins pretty high and i don't try to compete for a low price I put a price that I think a product is deserving based on the type of customer service I provide, on the shipping timelines and the returning policy. I think we shouldn't sell ourselves short. So I think uh, I hit a little bit shy of $80,000 in that 210 revenue total. Wow, that is super, super impressive. I love to hear that you really believe in your products and you know they're worth the price and people will buy them for those prices, right? We don't have to do the race to the bottom to get sales. You know, if you're really putting in the work, doing the research, adding value with your designs, right? Not just copying Mm -hmm. what other people are doing and using really beautiful mock-ups and making great listings, then people are willing to pay for those items because you've made sure that when they see that listing, they're like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. I have to have it. And I don't think it's always been like that for you. I know we talked before the interview that uh, last, say, January, you know, you sold very, very little compared to this January. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about what kind of your mindset was and your process when you weren't really getting consistent sales and what that's looked like now, kind of getting more consistent sales every single month? I'll start with telling you how I initially got going. After like a lot of learning, a lot of testing, watching YouTube videos, putting a diverse amount of products up, I started noticing some patterns and it's really important to be uh, very perceptive and to see what works, even if it worked only one, two, three times and you see even the spike in likes or in spike in uh, favorites, always pay attention to what works. And uh, still I wasn't getting the results that I wanted and First thing that I did, I remember that made a change is having a designer background, I had to completely strip off my ego and start designing for an audience and trying to understand what actually does my customer want instead of designing it for myself or thinking what if my friends see it. That was a big part of the process for me. And I know like for a lot of people, like maybe yourself, you thought of yourself, I'm not a designer, so I'm just going to do what people say. I thought, I know better what you guys say, and I'm going to do overcomplicated designs. And it was really an obstacle for me in the beginning. So dealing with that, 
putting it aside, putting my audience first, that was really a big one. Then obviously doing a lot of research, niches, searching niches, utilizing E-Rank. Uh, at a time we only had that. Now there's Everbee and there's so many other beautiful products and integrations you can use. Uh, you have to use it all the time. And I remember the final unlock for me was figuring out how to make a beautiful design plus mock-up combos because I'm pretty sure everyone hit that moment when you put a right design on a right t-shirt color or a right mood or emotion or a model smiling and then it just works you just want to buy it yourself so that was a final unlock for me the mock-ups I remember the market was changing. We were shifting from more of a flat lay mock-ups into a model mock-ups. And it was a beautiful time for me because I really enjoyed buying diverse amount of mock-ups, making beautiful storefront of all sorts of colors and seeing what sticks. And um, as I'm sure a lot of people noticed, the one shirt that you put on your thumbnail is the most stalled one people don't usually like to experiment with other colors they saw that pepper shirt on the on the thumbnail and they want to have that they want to chase that feeling they got from the teeny tiny mock-up they they opened up and um, it actually later on led me to open my own mock-up shop because i thought i would be able to cater to the community the way that other uh, mock-up sellers did to me and um, I knew a lot about how I want my designs to be placed how the lighting should look like how what emotions or lack of emotions should be appropriate for this or that mock-up and actually a few months back opened my own mock-up shop maybe you guys saw it it's called watermelon mocks so welcome to check that store out. Yes, I can't believe it. I have been watching your mock-up store for months kind of come up and start making all these beautiful mock-ups. And I had no idea that it was your shop. You are sneaky and had a you know code name on there as the owner and you wore a wig and a lot of the mock-ups. I'm like, I know you. And I couldn't believe I had no idea that that was your mock-up store. That blew my mind. And you are making gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous mock-ups. So definitely check out Watermelon Mocks, especially if you sell comfort colors shirts, which it sounds like, Alina, is that something that you sell a lot in your POD store is comfort color shirts as well? I actually uh, was hesitant to enter the comfort colors market first. So I first started selling mock-ups for it and because the margins were not as good in Printify at a time. Uh, for POD business, but now a couple of production partners offer really sweet prices and really nice trending colors. So I'm full on board now. Yes, I sell a lot of it, even though Gildan is not still my number one sale sold item. Uh, comfort colors are definitely popping. So you're talking about the Gildan 18,000 sweatshirt is your number one item? Uh, during the war colder seasons, yes. In the warmer seasons, it would be Gildan 5000 and Gildan 64. Oh, interesting. So you've sold a lot of Gildan t-shirts as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that's interesting to hear. I think you can be successful with any of these clothing types, but I think it all, in my opinion really does come down to the mock-ups that you choose. I think in my experience, when I first got started, I didn't use the Gildan shirts as much because there really weren't that many great mock-ups for them. Most of the really nice mock-ups were for the Bella Canvas 3001 t-shirt, which is why I used it so much in the beginning. But I think now the floodgates have really opened. There's a lot more mock-up shops and a lot more variety out there. And if you're looking for mock-ups, I know Alina and I worked out some special deals for you guys watching this. So if you want any mock-ups from her store, she shared a special 20% off code for anyone who watches this video. Just use code Cassie20 at checkout. And we're even doing a special giveaway for three lucky winners to win her whole shop bundle. And how much does that normally cost, Alina? Uh, the full price of a bundle right now is around $179 and it is well above the average market price, but you get 
thousands of mock-ups and a lot of bestsellers. Uh, so it's uh, worthwhile to get one, but you don't have to. Uh, other people who are just testing out and trying to see if it would work for them are welcome to buy just one uh, mock-up with a dis with a discount that we provided with Cassie um, that you can find in the section underneath. But yeah, we're giving away three whole shop bundles with lifetime access. You will get all the current and all the future mock-ups that we ever will post. Mm -hmm. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is comment down below any mock-up requests or suggestions, or even just your favorite mock-up that Alina has down below. And whoever's comments get the most likes will be the winners and will comment back with details on how to get your prize of the whole shop mock-ups. Make sure you go down below and like the people's comments to vote for who you think should win the whole shop mock-up. So definitely enter to win down below or check out Alina's mock-up shop because again I think mock-ups we've both seen from using kind of really bad mock-ups in the beginning when we didn't know what we were doing to when we started using mock-ups that really resonated with the niche resonated with the customer were really beautiful showed our design off really well really did make a huge difference in our listings to go from not getting a lot of sales to start seeing success. And what are some other things you think that you did, Alina, with your listings and your business that kind of took you from that hard part of not getting any sales, not getting consistent sales to really start seeing this consistent success? What kind of other changes did you make that you think attributed to that? I think a really important part was to notice what works. If something started to work, definitely putting it on another mock-up, putting it on another product, listening to your customers. If someone wants exactly the same thing, but slightly different, don't only create a custom order for them, create it as a separate listing and chances are other people will buy it as well. And answering your previ previous question about what changed into me getting more consistent sales rather than having these big spikes during the holiday season and then staying flat. I remember the first holiday season that I had, I was so overwhelmed and so happy and busy with October, November, December sales. I completely abandoned research for the Q1 of the next year. And there was no surprise. My January sales were so low, three, three digits type of low and um, I promised myself that next year I will invest more time in uh, researching more evergreen niches even though I didn't really know much about it and all these details we at a time two three years ago had to come up with ourselves but the more you learn, watch free YouTube videos, take paid courses, the better and quicker your success becomes. So basically last year I spent into investing a lot of time into creating evergreen designs, something that is not as exciting in the moment because you don't get a lot of sales at the same time in the same week or in a month. But when you look back over a year average, you see that it was consistent all the time and that's what makes it sweet. So this January, I actually made $16,000 in sales uh, for January, which is about 30 times more than I did last January, just because I put a lot of work and thought in my November was actually in my mind, I was living in February and I was living in January. Uh, and November is not about Christmas anymore. I'm sorry for you guys, but now Christmas is in the summer. Holidays, uh, winter holidays are now in, uh, uh, in the fall and the summer is now in the spring. So this is the real life of the POD seller. Yeah, I honestly, to get myself in the Christmas mood, will be sitting in like June or July, August and listening to Christmas music while I design to try and like get in the mood because it can be really jarring to be designing for and thinking about Christmas so far in advance. But 
I think for most holidays, you know, the sweet spot is getting listings up eight to 12 weeks in advance. And I think it's super, super important because if you already see a bunch of bestsellers for a holiday and they're already listed in the holidays in four weeks, those other listings have gotten so many sales, so many favorites, so many reviews that it's going to be hard to like overtake them. Whereas if you're the first one to show up to a holiday for a new specific trend mixed with that holiday or a new design style mixed with that holiday, you can really kind of make your a name for yourself in that niche before other people do and start to get those really big sales. And so um, just in case anyone's not familiar, though, going back to what Alina was talking about, to go from getting only holiday sales to now being able to sell $16,000 in January, when a lot of people get no sales in January, was her focusing on evergreen designs. And if you're not familiar with what that is, an evergreen design is just something that could sell at any time throughout the year. It's not related to any season or holiday. So evergreen designs are things like hobbies, professions, mom shirts, that type of stuff is what we mean by evergreen designs. And what did that really look like for you then, Alina, kind of trying to work these evergreen designs? Were you utilizing tools like Everbee and E-Rank to find these? Were you just looking at bestsellers? What did that look like practically for you, building up your um, you know, catalog of evergreen designs? Yeah, definitely E-Rank is my number one tool that I use as initial research then I, I jump into ever be with my findings and kind of prove the concept because I think um, ever uh, ever be has more um, current data about what is going on, like in the past weeks or in the past days, and and then test. Yes, I if I create a design now, I never put it just on one t-shirt and create one listing i create at least five listings for each design to see what actually what is the combo that people are looking for is it um is it more moody is it colorful is it more uh traditional black and white vibe or a sweatshirt and sometimes you could be surprised people are actually buying it on a tote bag more than they buy it on a t-shirt so yeah, it was definitely testing and being really perceptive. Be like an alien, like who doesn't know how to read, but just can pick up on patterns of what is different about it. Break down the listing and do the same thing with your competitors. Don't copy. Copying never works and you only get in trouble for that. But see why this particular sale, uh, this particular listing is a bestseller how are they place, placing a design? What mock-up are they using? How are they marketing it? What are the uh, niche combinations? Because I think in the past year or two, it's only about the niche combos. It's all about taking coffee lovers, teachers, single ladies, LGBTQ, putting it all together and targeting it really specifically at a coffee lover, pride person, teacher. Um, you know, there's actually a group that I think is really funny and it's called oddly specific t-shirts and it's literally t-shirts that are like, this mama has three kids and was born in July and loves her cat and her dog and her parrot. You know, and it's like these exactly. really uh, specific shirts. And I think that would be probably a little bit over the top for Etsy, but I do think you really have a point there is that. When you first get started, you look at a niche and that's all you can see. You're like looking at, say, the teacher niche and you're like, oh my gosh, people already made, you know, first grade teacher, world's best teacher, you know, this funny saying, like people have already done everything that there is to do. And it takes a little while to develop what I like to call your t-shirt vision, where mm -hmm. once you've looked at enough niches and kind of analyzed what you're talking about, Alina, is you're like, ooh, I haven't seen anyone mix teachers with coffee like I saw this social worker plus coffee shirt did. Or I haven't seen anyone make matching shirts for teachers to wear for St. Patrick's Day, whereas like I've seen matching shirts for friends to wear for St. Patrick's Day. And so you have to kind of start cataloging 
what are the ways that people have added value to their listings that I can just kind of like stock away in the back of my brain. And in the beginning, you look at your design canvas and you're like, I have no idea what to do. But eventually, once you've looked at enough designs, you've researched them, I come to the canvas and I have 20 ideas. And I'm like, ooh, I could mix this. I know this worked well in that niche. I'm going to apply it here. And um, I know this might sound crazy now, but trust me, it gets easier. And so do you have any advice on kind of what that's looked like for you, Alina? Because I know that adding value and not copying is something that a lot of people struggle with. I think creating templates for your scalable designs in Canva is a really sweet way to, to scale your business. Um, for example, there is a bachelor niche uh, that I honestly don't really relate to. I've never been to a bachelor party yet, uh, American one at least. Uh, so I never really understood how can I, how can I target, how can I relate to to the customers. So uh, in my business, I just created uh, a really best-selling working templates based on the style that people use in bachelorette parties and just applied it to another niches. Like if you're into triathlon, you can create, take the really proven concept of a bachelorette cocktail party and create like a triathlon party. Or if you're into teachers, it could be a teacher's club or a book club. Um, you don't, you don't copy the text, you don't copy the graphics, but there are always these styles with a font in a particular place with the really thin lines or color combos using like a pink bright pink shirt with a white design on it like these things that are almost like you cannot read but you just see how they work the, those are really important in your business especially when you're trying to scale it so i would suggest creating five templates of things that work really well, like uh, college fonts are right now are booming. They're, they're just, I don't know, breaking all the possible numbers in sales. Put something you are interested in or something you already sold in the college font, just one word. And referring to one of the recent Cassie's videos, like simple sales. If you're into, um, I don't know, Iron Man, I don't know, it's probably trademarked, but into running or biking or doing anything of that sort, like you can just put put it as one word with a year with some other small detail. And I'm sure you will find success really quickly if you're utilizing the templates. Yeah, no, I think the templates is a really good idea. Uh, I think that's something that I've utilized in my business a lot where I find, okay, this font with every other letter being a different color does really well in this niche. And so then I just made the exact same design for 50 other niches and like 10 or 15 of them sold really, really well. And so I think in the beginning, when you're listing stuff for sale, you list like one thing and it doesn't work. And you list another thing for a different niche and it doesn't work. And it feels like you're just kind of like playing battleship and you're hitting only the ocean, you know. But as soon as you hit a ship, it doesn't have to just apply to that niche, right? You need to, like Alina was talking about earlier, take any wins that you find, learn from them and keep reapplying them to more niches. And I think that's super, super good advice. And going back to what you said earlier about not running any ads, because I think you absolutely, just you're the proof even, can build a business without running ads. I think they can be a really good tool, but they're not a replacement for doing the things right that'll get you the sales anyways. I think that's one of the biggest issues people have with Etsy ads is they're not getting any sales. So they start running ads thinking that all they need is more traffic. When in reality, maybe their listing is too hard to read from the thumbnail. Maybe the mock-ups aren't very good. Maybe their title and tags weren't very good. And so unless you're doing all that stuff right anyways, and getting sales organically, then Etsy ads are just going to waste money for you. And so why don't you talk to us a little bit about how you make sure that you have really well converting listings that you feel like you don't even need ads? 
I think originally I tested out ads and it was just not working for me. Maybe I still need to get a course on how to work the ads to my benefit. While I do run ads in my mock-up shop and it's way more uh, straightforward in how it converts there. In my POD business, I never found success with it. Maybe because I already dominated some of the niches that I'm in. It wasn't adding anything new. I was getting the same amount of sales, just burning my ad budget. Um, but I think it's really important to find this beautiful balance on a thumbnail, having your design being large. Uh, nothing small cursive that no one can read from, from this size, because now Etsy says that most of the people make purchases on the app and on the phone, it's even smaller than on your desktop. It's really small. Competition is really high. Uh, attention spans are getting shorter. So it has to be really juicy and nice and, and catchy in order for, for the customer to open it up. But even to get in front of their eyes in the first place, you have to do the research. You have to utilize E-Rank, make a list of keywords that are definitely working. My strategy usually is 80% of a niche and less competition uh, tags and titles and 20% of a more broad one. So even if people are searching for a, I don't know, running shirt, and it's not necessarily very specific to the type of run, running that I'm selling for, they can still find me. And nobody knows how algorithm works, so I'm trying to test and throw things that are more specific and more broad. But yeah, it's not a rocket science. It's almost all comes down to having good proven SEO, uh, having designs that people are looking for. Don't try to be a trendsetter because it's it's pretty hard. It almost never works. And it, it's um, usually a way to just waste your time. There are already so many things people are searching for. Just get in front of their eyes by doing proper research, creating designs that are trending right now and putting it on a correct mock-up and a, a mock-up design color combo. Because I cannot stress enough how this combination can elevate even not the best skilled designs and you don't have to be uh, an artist to create beautiful selling designs nowadays canva is our everything it has all the font combos it has so many beautiful graphics i think also a really important uh part about becoming successful is finding a community i know that a lot of people are afraid of outing their shop or uh, discussing it in more detail. And obviously because there are a lot of copycats, but even me and Cassie, we found ourselves in this um, community of only POD sellers. We were all direct competitors, but I think we only make each other stronger. We even share the specific niches with each other. Where can you jump in next? Uh, where there is still a lot of demand and not a lot of offering. And I think now this beautiful YouTube community or if you find a Discord group or a course is just so helpful to learn through other people's process. Maybe you figured out this bit, but you learn something else from, uh, from another um, partner in your group and not being afraid of being part of the community. I think we're making each other stronger. We're making Etsy stronger. There's abundance of demand it's going to be enough for everybody so don't be afraid just do it and list that listing that you've been sitting on for a week yeah i think that's really really good advice i think a lot of people have a lot of self-limiting beliefs and scarcity mindsets where you're like well i don't want to share my ideas with anybody else because then i won't get anything or everyone else is already getting all the sales there's not enough for me but in being on etsy myself for four years now. I can't believe it. I think it might actually be this week, might be my four wow. year exact anniversary, uh, maybe next week of finding print on demand, is that 
four years ago, everyone was talking about how oversaturated Etsy was. Everyone was talking about how they weren't getting sales. Everyone was talking too about late. How, they were getting, how it was too late. And it's just funny to see that those conversations happen year after year. And it's because people just feel like it's oversaturated. But every day there's new design trends. Every day there's new hobbies and different holidays. You know, there's always more. And I have started this YouTube channel because I have an abundance mindset. I really do think that I can be successful selling print on demand. You can be successful selling print on demand. And so can everyone else watching this video. We all have our own unique perspectives, our own unique ideas to have ways to combine niches <clears throat> or ways to combine two different design styles or take this niche, but put it on a pink sweater with dark pink words for that monochrome style that you've seen so popular. And there's always new ways to do something. And so I love that you're sharing that. I think that's really, really important. And I really appreciate you coming on for this interview. I think this has been a great preview in what I hope that people are watching is that there isn't some like secret sauce or secret key that the successful Etsy sellers are keeping from you. It really does come down to doing a lot of research and a lot of testing. And then when you find what works for you, do more of that. And that's, I think, honestly, all that goes into it. I think that's like the whole kit and caboodle. But as kind of like a last thing, Alina, is there anything else that you would kind of add in? If someone's sitting there at home, they're not getting the sales that they want. They're not finding success. What would you say to them to either encourage them or any advice? First of all, I think it's okay we all struggled. It was the time when we all thought, oh my God, this is, I guess it's just not for me. <clears throat> but since you're in this video now, you're probably still hopeful there is something that could be done and it could be. Uh, first of all, everything that Cassie listed, you have to do and stay consistent. Be obsessed, do it every single day a little bit or three times a week, but every single week. And if you have that, you will definitely find your breakthrough. Uh, I remember also one particular thing that I did was spending a painful for me amount of money for a course. It could be different amounts for everybody. When you spend your hard work and money on an education course, you will be more uh, invested. You will be more consistent. You will be surrounded by the community and this was what works for me so well finding the course finding all of this knowledge put by somebody in the same place together just for me just so i can benefit and yeah sometimes they're expensive they could be a couple of hundred dollars or some people charge thousands of dollars but it's it's totally worth it you will return it real quick you can go the longer route and watch youtube videos that totally works as well it's just gonna take a little long longer but if you want a shortcut i'd say join the community i really appreciate you hopping on and sharing your knowledge and your experience and the special coupon codes and giveaway for your mock-up shop that is super super generous so thank you so so much for your time thank you for having me cassie all right bye I really hope that you enjoyed this interview with Alina and don't forget to join the giveaway down below if you love to win the whole shop bundle of all of her thousands of mock-ups all at once and for free. So post what mock-ups you would like to see more of down in the comments and like other people's because the three most liked comments are going to win the prize and we'll be messaging you back on YouTube in the comments to give you those results at the end of next week. So thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. I really hope that you got some inspiration from this video, that there's not some secret key to success that the people on YouTube just aren't telling you about. It really does come down to just being obsessed, putting in the work, being consistent, doing research, testing, and doubling down on what's working. I know that sounds like it's too simple, but that is really what it takes. 
because simple doesn't always mean easy. It's going to take a lot of work to get there, but just know that you're not alone. There's so many other people on this same journey as you learning right now. So find some kind of community to get support and not feel so alone in this journey. And just know that we are here rooting for you. And I'll link that video that Alina mentioned earlier about how to make simple designs that sell since it really can be easy to overcomplicate designs. So I'll link that video up next for you to watch. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end and I'll see you in the next one.